Hey everybody, welcome back. Yeah. Northerners, episode 63. Well done, wow. gentlemen. Uh, going down the line. Hey, Mark Herman, a.k.a. L.A. Bengal fan on Twitter. We're up in the Bengals. Dave Green, Browns guy. Jay Davis, Utah, Ravens Nation. Chris Atkins, AFC North, representative in this year's playoffs. I hate you. That's it. No, I hate you. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. So, I got, I got business to attend to. We got a lot of business. Right. We got so, a lot of business to uh, take care. First off, let's see. For you, good sir. Here you go. Uh, I hate that I have to do this. That's right. Oh, oh the dirty bird jersey. Yeah, there you go. Go! And uh, go! for you, go! sir. For you, sir. I have my dog's old Ravens jersey. Oh, right there. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> Whoa. Whoa. It's what do we do? Oh. So, enjoy. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> All right, so um, let's go ahead and talk. All right, well, you know, the last couple of weeks, it was hard watching these last two games. They're actually worse than preseason games because in the preseason, you're looking forward to the season, and here we're just kind of playing out the string. Um, the loss to Houston was just typical of our entire season in a microcosm. I mean, we hold an opponent to 12 points. We're driving down the field for a winning field goal, and we miss it, and we lose 12 to 10. Just classic. Defense did a job. Offense didn't. Typical. Um, uh, offense decided to show up against you guys last week. Yeah, because our defense decided not to. Yeah, and they decided not to show up. Um, unfortunately, it only cost us one spot in the draft um, because Carolina was the only team to leapfrog us. I loved how salty the Bengals Reddit was at like during moments because I was watching the game thread while the game yeah. was going on. And, like I'd be watching the Ravens subreddit and the final, and like every time I was like, "Why are we winning?" Right, right. It's the one game where you don't want to jeopardize. We could have actually fallen all the way back to eleven. So that was. It but was, what's uh, funny is that on the Ravens subreddit, it was like a bunch of Ravens fans that are basically. They're like, oh god, I can't believe we're still playing this badly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so, um, uh, waiver wire pickup, Kavari Russell had an interception of Mallet that was really nice. Um, Rex Burkhead continued Dude. to make a statement oh, yeah. that he either belongs on the Bengals or he will be on a roster next year. Yeah. I mean, he did a really I mean, he, nice he job. Was, he, like that one where he literally just plows right through, he fakes the block and then goes right yeah. through. Oh. Beautiful play. And he showed, he's a smaller back, but he showed that he could be an every down back because we mm -hmm. really didn't have anybody else to put in. So he got, you know, 30 plus carries or, you know, touched the ball 30 times. So he showed he could be an every down back. Uh, Tyler Boyd, Alex Erickson, Cody Corp continued to develop. They look great. Um, Tyler Boyd had a great catch and a nice uh, reverse in this game. Uh, and Alex Erickson had a 35 yard kickoff return that was really nice and actually finished as the top kick returner in the NFL this year. So mm. undrafted free agent walk on and he ends up leading the yeah. league in kick return. He almost burned us. I mean, so yeah. he's yeah. 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 kick return. So and, uh, Vigil and Fenjolan both had nice moments. They got to, uh, enough playing time and uh, so that's Bengal news. Uh, you know, uh, looking forward now. I'll cover, you know, looking forward in the next segment. But uh, yeah, that's what I've got from our game. I, so, I watched it more for developing players and getting snaps in for people. I want to, yeah, exactly. I want to touch on that and we'll, we'll talk real quick about mm -hmm. that because I know we both did. Uh, you can check. We also did instant reviews uh, yeah. from, uh, from that game. Um, you can see it on the YouTube. But with, uh, with our game, yeah, like our defense didn't show up. I mean, honestly, like with... Seeing Judon get hurt in the la in that time, like that, that scared me a little bit. I'm glad that like CJ Mosley seems like he's just a, a thigh issue. Like, it was I was really not happy about that. And then of course Ryan Mallett reminded everybody why he's Ryan Mallett. Oh, absolutely, yeah. Um, and Flacco with that with that other pick, I mean, just uh, yeah, yeah. Sean Williams had a nice yeah, interception in the end. Right zone. at it. But yeah. I, the thing I loved, the thing I loved was like Steve Smith last game. Still, no matter what. He is still like, he was just a beast. Like, Steve. And I, and I like his shoes. Did you get a shot of yeah, his shoes? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Chad Johnson right there, yeah. Orange Jake, Moose, all the people that supported him throughout his career. Yeah. Real nice move. Wow. It was a brilliant cool. move. It was yeah. really, really cool to see. Um, I was, it was good to see, like, Rashad Perryman not get afraid of getting hit. Like, right. Like, that was good to see. Um, but yeah, I mean, I don't have a lot to say about the game. It was, it was what it was. And with that, uh, into ours real quick, like, man, that that was a good game. That was no. a hell of a game. That was a really good game. I was fortunate enough to go to that one. If you watch my review, my instant review, I was still at the stadium getting kicked out of the stadium, actually. Yeah, at the end, yeah, it was good. Um, <laughs> Sir, could you please clear out? <laughs> and he was in a Steeler jersey, and they had to clear out. <laughs> Welcome to Pittsburgh. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I was, you know, there was some really good showings. Like, honestly, like, our offense showed up and our defense didn't. Like that was that's hands down exactly pretty much what happened. Like our offense had a really good showing against yours, but our defense just 
was what they've been all season, which was totally. It, it was really scary there towards the end. You guys mm -hmm. had the touchdown yeah. late in the game. Yeah. We had to come by, yeah. come back and score nine seconds left. And about that score, I, I was talking about this a few episodes ago. That was number fifty yeah. for Ben yeah. and Brown. That's our franchise yeah, that's record right. now. And also very Joe, cool to see. And Joe Flacco uh, broke the uh, record by Testa Verde in uh, for the Ravens. He is oh, now wow. the this season he broke the previous record of yards for, yards thrown. So with over four thousand, which shows the show that 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 statistic is bullshit. Like mm -hmm. it doesn't mean a damn thing. It was. It, I was surprised because when you guys scored late, I thought, okay, now the defense will just close it out. And what's got you to this mm -mm. point mm -mm. didn't show up. Yeah. All right. So, so let's move on to Browns. Oh, really quick. I want to say what's up there. One that was in goal four that let me come out and tailgate with him at the game. Absolutely loved it. Look forward to coming back out again. Rock on. So Browns. Browns played the Steelers. <laughs> yeah. Don't, don't you have some business on, on a like charity level? <laughs> He's you to collect. Well, you didn't actually want to lose the first overall. Pick. Yeah, no, no, like, no, hell you no. Showed no. up, no. you were respectable. Hey, we just you lost the overtime, and they let you we keep did the you first pick. So yeah. overall, I think it was I think good. this is the first, first show where a, a, somebody's actually gotten two jerseys. It is. Yeah, yeah, yeah that is the first show. And I hate that it's fucking you. Yeah, I fucking hate you. Alright, put this on top of. It's a little doggy yeah, jersey. Yeah. Oh my lord. Well, <laughs> yeah. that one team got two jerseys and one guy had to give two jerseys. Ooh, oh, oh, we've never had any yeah. of those. Well, that's, that's, that's another thing. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh god, that's, this is gonna suck. All one right. of the things that held by seven. <laughs> 67 yard run. It was late in the fourth. Though at the beginning here, watch the cut move. He come, goes right, goes left, around the tackle, freaking makes a juke, freaking beautiful play. Uh, that's something I enjoyed. And uh, this one also right here, Griffin on a scramble for 19 yards. I'm only bringing it up because I just want to say, holy shit, he slid. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, on the game, on the game, on a whole, look, I thought we played pretty decent against you guys. Um, yeah. Everybody's saying all oh, it was against their second stringers. That's a bunch of bullshit. Pittsburgh only set Ben, Bell, Brown, and Jesse James. So all their playmakers. And, and two guys out of Yeah, but the lines are, they didn't they didn't rest the offensive and defensive Yeah, they didn't rest the line. You can still win a game. Yeah. We so. played really, really good. And for the fact that like they pushed it into overtime and uh, um, Hawkins fucked that one up, so we had to kick the field goal, which allowed you guys to make the drive down and win it. Shit. Yeah. What are you going to do? Uh, we got the window. And, Got the first overall pick, so go Browns, baby. Yeah. Here's here's what I love seeing in that game. I love seeing, you know, some of the reserves. I'm talking about Bones Jones. I'm talking about D'Angelo Williams. Uh, and Demarcus Ayers, who got his first career touchdown. He's a rookie. Really love seeing that. I, I really like seeing these guys show a little moxie. I mean, we were down 14 nothing, come roaring back with 21 unanswered points. Yeah. And it took this one home 27-24 uh, for Steelers. Yeah, overtime. Artie Burns, great pick, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, that makes it seven straight for us heading into the playoffs with a full head of steam. And our guys are a little rested because uh, we didn't have to play in this game. Mm -hmm. Nice. So. You guys got Miami coming up. And I have a question about that. You guys got smoked by Miami the last time you played, mm -hmm. correct? Mm -hmm. And it was Ajay who smoked you guys. What is going? What are you guys going to do? Ajay, 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 Ajay. I had the same <laughs> issue. The same issue. It's Jay still Billy speak, baby. Um, <laughs> what are you guys going to do to stop him so you guys can advance and represent this co this division better yeah. than a one and done? Well, let me tell you what's different about this game. I was going to say this, but let me just jump right into it. Yeah. First and foremost, this game's going to be in Pittsburgh. And we yes. obviously are a night and day team yes. going yeah. away. That's really a yeah. problem. So the only team that's probably more Jekyll and Hyde is Seattle. Mm, yeah, you guys yeah. are you guys are close second. But especially in these late months here, December, January, totally different team. We we have the uh, urgency. We know what's going on here. Next is the run defense, led by Bud Dupree and James Harrison. They're going to see a totally different front than they saw in that Week Six game. I want to say. Yeah, something like that. Uh, uh, last that is, like Bell was still kind of shaking off a little bit of rust in that, in that game, in that week six game. It was only his third game back. Uh, put a lot more pressure on Ben on the receiving core. The receiving core really wasn't ready. So now I think with the receiving core being a little bit more seasoned, I'm not going to say better, I'm going to say more seasoned, okay. and then having Bell come in to kind of grind that defense down a little bit, keep the ball out of Tannehill's hands, out of Ajayi's hands, 
I think that's going to make a, a total difference in this game. I think it's going to be a totally different outcome this time around. Yeah. You, you got a final score for it? Yeah. Do you think it's going to be I a mean, late thing that you guys pull it out? I think it's going to be a, a 24-13 game. I think Ajayi's going to probably get one. Him or uh, the receiver, I can't think of his name. Mm -hmm. Jarvis, Jarvis Landry. Landry. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One of the two of them is going to get one, but we're, we're saying earlier, Tannehill's a little dinged up. I think Ajayi's a little dinged up. Good luck. Good is luck. Is Tannehill back for sure? I don't know that yet. I don't know that right now. And if he's not playing, well, then fuck it. Friday. Yeah, more than like Friday. Yeah. yeah, but you gotta, like, don't don't fall into the trap of thinking that backup QB doesn't have something to prove. We did it last well, year against Ryan Mallett. That boy was a season veteran. So, yeah. I mean, it's he'll, he'll manage the game. Yeah. He won't beat you, but he won't lose it for him either. Yeah, exactly. But I mean, he's because he's a veteran. Postseason game in Pittsburgh, the Steelers are clicking right now. You 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 can't win with a game manager. You need someone who's going to come out there and sling it. If it's not Tannehill, I, I don't see this going well for those guys. Right. Okay. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, I still think that it's. Uh, I mean, I, I have to. I have to like reserve judgment on that because like I I originally said that I thought that our game was going to be low scoring mm -hmm. and you thought mm -hmm. it was going to be higher mm -hmm. and you know it's like we racked them up. I I, I, I my gut says, Whoa, but you might be right. I mean. I've been right a couple of times this season so far. But I think you handle it. I don't, I don't see you losing. <laughs> no, I, don't see, I don't see the Steelers losing twice in the same season to the Dolphins. It is yeah, so no, not, uh, This yeah. isn't a Dan Marino Dolphin team you know, I'm with that you lose twice to. I just it is my, my so argument. hard to sweep an NFL team, and I just don't see it happening. Yeah, right. I, I, Do you my, know what the line is? It's a 10. 10? Is it 10? Yeah. Wow. There you go. Wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, all right, guys. All right. So, um, we're doing forward previews. What yeah. Do you do? Uh, so here's what we'll do: is uh, you're coming up. You just did your preview. So basically, at this point, um, our shows are going to get a little shorter because uh, all three of our teams are basically out. Uh, we don't have a Reddit mailbag today, so our episode's going to be a little shorter here today. However, what I did want to bring is like a table discussion. I know I'm bringing this on you guys. Is uh, looking ahead, what? Coaching changes or uh, contracts? Do you want to see either negotiated or it dropped completely? Actually, that falls right in because I was going to talk draft and who we're bringing right. back. So that actually works out perfectly. Um, uh, like I said, we have the uh, ninth overall draft pick. Um, it's a premium pick since we're yeah. top yeah. ten. is a premium pick in first, second round. We can pick up quality guys. Um, uh, we uh, uh, Agwe, he had a very disappointing year, and it's a frustrating because we spent a first and a second on offensive linemen uh, two drafts ago, mm -hmm. and Fisher's got a shoulder issue. They actually both have shoulder issues, and then one was very disappointing. Um, Zeitler's a free agent. Drake Kirkpatrick's a free agent. Rex Burkhead's a free agent, and Andrew Whitworth's a free agent. So the reason why I'm talking about offensive linemen is we have Whitworth and, and Zeitler that we need to address. Um, if possible, we have to bring them both back. We have to. Um, even though Whitworth is long in the tooth, he's a student, he's a, he's a locker room leader, mm -hmm. and he's very versatile. He will move to guard, he'll play guard on either side, tackle on either side. He'll do whatever we need him to do. He wants to be back. I think we need to figure out a way to bring him back. Um, Drake or Patrick's value may have just jumped up with Pac-Man Jones getting arrested today. Yeah! So, yeah. So, so, I forgot about that! And, 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 and I gotta say something. One felony. Yeah. And I gotta say something. I fucking hate with, that guy. Uh, with with that happening, I mean we're kind yeah. of on the fence. Kirkpatrick had an okay season. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We gave Jones money. You know, at the at the, he got his new contract last year. So I don't know that we bring Jones back. He was looking a step slower this season anyway. I wasn't really happy with his play. So if this turns out to pan out, maybe Kirkpatrick gets the Jones money that would yeah. be figured in the next yeah. year. Yeah. Do you cut Jones ASAP? Um, I, cut, I cut him not because I don't, I don't know what the facts are on this, and he most of the trouble he got into was with the Titans, not with us. Of course. Okay. So, but I'd like to see the facts come out. But I was already not looking at bringing him back just because of his play on the field. Mm. So it okay. doesn't, you know, like I said, I was kind of on the fence. Do we do we bring in Ker, do we give Kirkpatrick money because we just gave Jones money? But now that may have already been decided for us. So yeah. we'll see how the the Brown family decides to to handle that. Um, another interesting thing, and this is getting lost. Nobody's thinking about this, but we get William Jackson the third and Andrew Billings back next year. Ooh. They weren't on our team. That's like having mm -hmm. two draft picks before the draft even mm -hmm. starts. We've got the top cover corner in this year's draft, and we. We've got a guy who was a second round talent, a mini Geno Atkins. They hit us plus our draft picks. We move on. 
Let's so, uh, not forget Dark Kiss and R. You might not need yeah, Dark yeah. And the other thing is, uh, Bengals should get compensatory picks for Sanu, Jones, and Andre Smith. So we're going to have a lot of stuff to work with this year. Oh, nice. Also, we may trade McCarron, which will also get us some good picks. So, there you go. That's Bengals looking forward. All right, well, before I talk about Browns, I just want to wrap the fantasy football season up <laughs> and say congratulations <laughs> to First Down Syndrome on kicking my ass. Congratulations. Yeah. 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 I'd also like to uh, say the Weed Curtain Place third comeback city was fourth, Perfect Storm five. Our very own Praxis turned in six. Uh, we went all, we went all in with seventh, and our very own LA Bengal fan placed eighth. There you go. Um, this is a great season, guys. And I know we've got some people that we're going to be losing this year. Um, and I also think that we've got some people lined up that want to play. If you want in, please send us an email. AFCNortherners at gmail.com. Thank you. That's where you can get us, and we'll address this situation. Come around also and message, NFL draft time. You can also message us directly on Reddit if you uh, are a Redditor as well. All right, so Browns news. Uh, congratulations to Terrell Pryor, over 1,000 yards receiving on 77 wow. catches. Crow, first year as a receiver. It's first freaking year. First Crow, year. Crowell almost topped 1,000. He ended yeah. the year on a 952 with 198 attempts. And Cody Kessler, despite the concussions and not playing a lot, he was 128 on 195 for 1380. Quarterback rating a 92.3, wow. which is amazing. Uh, the downside, we were negative 12 in the turnover ratio. And some positives, Browns and the Bears get to coach the senior bowl in that's 2017. That's a big positive. That's really cool. No, no, that's a big positive. That's yeah. really cool. And uh, we get to go to London next year where we're going to play the Vikings. So that's yeah, only going to get yeah, us we're, seven we're going to play games. The Jags. Uh, we get to line up this coming season against the NFC North, AFC South, along with the Chargers and the Jets. So this is going to be a really, really fun year. Uh, along with the Vikings game, that's a home game for us. We get the Packers, Titans, Jags, Jets and these guys once in Cleveland. I think we're going to turn the corner next year. And that's what I got for the Browns stuff. Yeah. I'd like to Browns. point something out on the Senior Bowl. The year Marvin coached it, it was that following draft where we drafted Dalton. Dalton. Yep. He held out. That was actually Marvin's number one guy from the Senior Bowl that he coached, that he wanted. So he waited till the second round. We also got uh, A.J. Green that year. Mm -hmm. And we picked up, he made contact with Perfect, and Perfect mm -hmm. came as an undrafted free agent to our team. Wow. All those connections were made in the, the senior, senior Bowl by yeah. Marvin Lewis coaching. So it's a big deal, yeah. if you don't realize it, it really, being able to it really coach is. the Senior Bowl yeah. and get really a close look at these guys way before the combine. Yeah. That's why I bet you we wait on taking a quarterback this coming season, uh, coming draft. I think we don't touch that. Uh, me and my brother got into it. I like Jonathan Allen at one. He's a big Garrett guy at one. Uh, either way, we can't go wrong. The dream pick, though, is that 12th pick. I want to say the stat I saw was 13 out of the last 23 or 27 uh, picks made at 12 have all turned in uh, 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 Pro Bowl seasons. So, oh, wow. And more than half of them were defensive guys. All right, well, don't hassle them it. I had to. I had. It was just low hanging fruit. I had to go for it. Wow. <laughs> it was just right oh. there. <laughs> All right. So, uh, Ravens. I, I don't want to. Yeah, we're going to be doing a lot of draft yeah. episodes and stuff like that. I don't want to do so much. I mean, I, honestly, I think that we need. I think that we need a new. We need a corner. And we need. God, do we need a center? Of, and shush. Uh, but uh, honestly, I'd like to see us buck up our offensive line quite a bit more. Um, I, I, I'm really tired of seeing Hurst on that side. I hate yeah. him. Anyway, um, so going into the season, like we just found out that, uh, Morningweg is going to stay the OC. Oh. I am not a fan of that decision. Like it's cool, like whatever, but like, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not really excited about it. And Dean Pease is still saying a defensive coordinator and I fucking want to shoot myself. Yeah, if right. he does go on three, he might be the first one to like, He'll be the first oh yeah. Yeah. I, but I don't. I don't even want that to happen. No. Like I no. want him gone. Like I. Want, I'm sorry, Dean. Like I'm, I know that you. You've tried really, really hard. But no, I'm done. Um, I'm. I'm. I'm gonna be happy to see like some guys go. Honestly, like uh, Sharice Wright has been to me like meh. Uh, I, meh. <laughs> yeah, it's very meh. Um, it's. It's gonna be like. It's gonna be tough. I, I want to see like. Zuta out there, center stuff like that. So it's going to be interesting more for me to see what happens in uh, in free agency and postseason to see who goes and who stays. Right now, like there's there's a lot of moving pieces. There's a lot of potential that could be seen. So I don't want to say too much or put out too much because 
you know, next season, like we everybody said, like Rashad Perryman's going to be a bust, and then this season he has a damn good season. Okay. I mean, if you, you think know, of this, really. if you think of this as his rookie well, this season, his rookie year, yeah, 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 he did fantastic for a rookie year. Right. Even for a sophomore year, he he did actually really really well. Right. So I'm excited about that. Well, that's what I got. Steelers. Uh, I think the most change is going to come in our linebacking core. I mean, obviously yeah. Harrison being 38. You know, I, I just don't know what the future holds for him. Yeah. Right. Uh, I, I do think we have to, I mean, obviously we have to draft for his replacement. But a couple guys on the bubble, I mean, Arthur Motes and uh, Jarvis Jones. I think Jarvis Jones may have started his last game yeah. as a dealer. I totally see him hitting the road, getting the hell out of here. I, I do think yeah. we could possibly go linebacker first and second round. The other person who I think is in a little bit of trouble this draft is going to be uh, Bones Jones. I, I could see us going after a quarterback, maybe second or third round if someone good is available. But yeah, I don't see I mean, you guys keeping that. He, he's been in Pittsburgh for for years now and has never really put no. it all together. I mean, he he's had single games like against the Browns. He did really well, three three touchdowns, I think one pick. Great game for him, like two hundred twenty seven or two seventy seven. But he he can't put together a string of those games like we saw last season. Um, I, I see him getting out of there. Coach-wise, I mean, I, I really don't see any change. I mean, my hope is that uh, Haley sticks around as our offensive coordinator. I know that he is interested in being a head coach, and there's a lot of interesting jobs out there. Yeah. I don't know if anything's interesting enough to get Todd Haley out of there, but the, the San Fran job and the uh, L.A. Rams jobs, I think, are both very, very interesting. The Broncos as well. Man, it, I was... I, I, I really want to look up to see if there – what NFL season at the end of it had the most amount of coaches fired in a season. It's usually, well, it's usually five or six five every or year. Six. Yeah, I know. But, but I don't know like, what the most of most. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like, that's a if you guys word. look it up, uh, throw it in the comment section. Yeah, exactly. If you guys know what, up, yeah. what uh, NFL season had the most amount of coaches yeah. fired, like head coaches fired in a season? I'd love to know that stat. Um all right, guys. So uh, and Bones Jones can't. It's not that he can't string it together. He turns the ball over. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He doesn't protect the ball. It's one thing to come in. You maintain your backup status. He just you can never... come in, manage games, and not lose the game. He loses games. Yeah, but I you have one really good game per season. Unfortunately, okay. is that that enough? doesn't keep you employed. No, no, in the NFL. It Unfortunately for us, it came in week seventeen against the Browns. I really wish, just in case something he barely happened. got one. Yeah, against the Browns. I mean, yeah, no, like it's, uh, I, he's he just honestly, I don't think he's got enough heart. Uh, he's he's a manager at best, and I kind of see him getting drafted. For a second, I thought you were going to say he was a manager at Best Buy. Best Buy. <laughs> 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 it's still yellow and black somewhere, right? I'm trying to stuff down for a professional, you know, NFL player. So right. with a league minimum of uh, seven fifty, right. we got to get this going. All right, guys, uh, thank you so much for watching again. We love you, Facebook Live. We love you guys. Um, feel free to comment here. Also, uh, make sure that you follow us on Twitter at AFC Northerners. We are on Reddit, AFC Northerners as well. We post our shows there. Get, email us, AFC Northerners at gmail.com with your comments, your questions. Uh, next week we're going to be doing our Reddit mailbag um, as long as, as well as our email mailbag, basically right. mailbag. So we're going to have a lot of time for questions. We expect all of them. We love them. And uh, other than that, we're going to sign off. No, 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 no. no. We, got, we got new subscribers. Oh, yeah. New subscribers. Oh, yeah, new subscribers. Go, go, go. Yeah, uh, go. And also, also, I want to say congratulations to Jan. Yeah. Watching him cry after our game is, has been our highest rated video so yes, far. Yes, yes. So, Big amount of views. Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Thank you so much. I, I appreciate it so much. So, I, you guys like me. You really, really, you really, like really, really like me. Because of that, we have the most new subscribers we've ever had. Let me run down here. I'm going to mispronounce every one of these on purpose. <laughs> right. Joshua Barak. Thank you. Cedric Granger. Thank you. My absolute favorite. Sadie Bear, the Steeler fan heiress. Thank you. Oh, welcome, welcome. Yay. Jay Pope. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Dominic yeah. Cunningham. Thank you. 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 We should like just uh, cheers to everybody. Thank cheers you. Cheers to all the new subscribers. Welcome. Thank you very much, guys. Um, all right, guys. So uh, we'll be back here next week, and uh, we will sign off as we always do with fuck, fuck the Patriots. Except I need you to make the Super Bowl and win because I bet. Oh stop! <laughs> I, will pay you back. I will pay you back. I will. You know what? Thank you.
you. Yes, Thank no, you. No, no. I'll give you all your money back. I guess. Bye. Bye. Uh oh. Like Mitch that reaction see it that says way. it all. Hey, fellow Northerners, we love the show. We want to make it even better. You may have noticed we started showing game clips, and we have even more planned for you guys. So we need your help. We started a Patreon page to bring you our show commercial free for less than $5 a month. For less than the price of a Grey Barbarian Knit Octopus Beanie on Amazon, which is actually a thing you should look that up, you can help make this show even better, including instant reactions to each game, a weekly podcast, in-depth analysis, and much more. If you want to help us improve and you can spare a little change, go to patreon.com forward slash AFC Northerners or click in the link below in the show notes to subscribe. Exactly. We appreciate every one of your views, your comments, and your emails. Thanks for watching, and as always, fuck the Patriots! Thanks, everybody. Thank you, guys. Look at me! I'm Dr. Zoidberg! <laughs>